Hi everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video what I want to do is go over just a uh, simple beginner technique on how to set up a prop for actual like fracturing, almost like a destruction asset. Um, so something where you potentially would knock over off of a table or even shoot with a gun and it kind of just uh, breaks apart and fractures like it would probably do in the real world. Um, so for this example at least I'm going to be using this uh, vase here that's kind of on my outside area of the patio and I want to take uh, this this prop and basically turn it into a um, yeah, destructible asset. So right now it's just a simple uh, OBJ that I had brought in. Um, it's in my geometry folder down here and so I'm going to go up here to the mode uh, now that I have it selected and I'm going to switch over to fracture and so this fracture mode, um, this is basically where you can set up uh, fractured assets and everything. Uh, there's a large variety of um, breakup that you can do and different techniques you can use for this. Uh, but for this at least, I want to just do like a cluster fracture, almost like it would just see a like shatter like you see in a lot of games. Um, so what I'm going to do first is now that we're over in the fracture mode, I'm going to hit new and I'm going to generate a new geometry collection asset. Uh, so basically it's just making a new asset um, similar to the vase, but it doesn't want to override the vase. And this is a uh, geometry collection, so it's a collection of all these fractured pieces put together uh, almost like a grouping or a pairing of them. And I'm just going to place it in my geometry folder as well. Uh, and it will be vase, you know, geometry collection. I could actually name it, let's say, vase A uh, fractured or uh, destructible. I think destructible could be a good word for it, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, let's do create geometry collection. And now you're going to see that the actual materials changed uh, slightly. So uh, now over here in the element two, it's going to say selected geometry material. Um, and that's fine right now. Uh, we'll change the material once we uh, kind of have gone through our fracture process. Um, but now over here on this left side, we will find our uh, fractured types. Um, and then a couple of yeah, other features. This is just all the different details that you can do. Uh, and like I said, there's a large variety of ways you can actually go about uh, setting up something like this. But what I want to do is I'm just going to kind of walk through a couple of these uh, to show like what uh, they could be used for. So the uniform one is just going to be a, a very uniform. It's pretty even how it's going to actually fracture out. And so I think what I'm going to do here is going to hit fracture and we can see that yeah it's pretty uniform with how it's kind of broken apart um, but I think I'm going to uh, control Z I'm not a fan of that one let's try out the cluster one and then fracture there uh, this one's a little bit more interesting and I would say uh, potentially more realistic just because it's a little bit more randomized I would say um, and yeah, that one's not too bad. And what we're seeing right now is a preview. This isn't actually it uh, updating. But then we do have over here on the right side the fracture hierarchy. So this is basically the groupings. Um, they're clustered together and they're being grouped together. Uh, so you can have hierarchy of the different bone components of the mesh. Um, and so uh, basically I could do this and then fracture again. And then you're going to see that it's going underneath each piece. So each uh, initial fractured like piece is then additionally getting more uh, geometry underneath it as it clusters in that way. Um, but I'm just going to control Z again and go back to our vase without anything. And then now what I want to do is show off the radial one. Uh, I think what radial is best for, uh, definitely let me go back real quick and then rotate this a little bit. So radial is going to be great for actually uh, using it with uh, I would say like glass if you want to have like shattered glass uh, this would be perfect for that um, just because it's going to give a, a radial kind of you know fracturing from one point and breaking apart. Uh, now of course 
each of these fractures that we're doing has additional uh, details on this panel here before you actually hit fracture. Uh, right now I'm just kind of showing off the default uh, settings, but you can go through here and actually change a good amount of things uh, to really vary it up and break it apart a bit more. Um, but yeah, so with this one, I think radial is pretty good, like I was saying, for uh, like glass, like especially like if you have a glass that's maybe shot, um, then it's going to like uh, basically fracture out from this center point, uh, kind of like what a bullet hole would do. And uh, yeah, so I think that would be kind of a good case for this use. Um, now there's, of course, like uh, planar as well. So you could actually like place it on an exact plane uh, or at least use this plane to fracture it at that point. So maybe, yeah, for whatever reason you had like some concrete you wanted to like slide off or something, uh, this could be an interesting way to go about doing that as well. So I'm going to hit cancel on this one. And then there's also the slice. So yeah, all of these have a lot of cool different, uh, you know, use cases for them, I would say. Uh, I think, yeah, I'll probably skip actually fracturing with this one. Um, it's going to be pretty even. And then there's the, the brick one as well. So if you wanted to set up like some sort of a brick fracturing where it's like kind of breaking apart like that, that could be cool for maybe cobblestones or so. Uh, or even, yeah, bricks that kind of break apart. And if you set it up properly with the bricks, then it could um, basically allow them to actually break apart in that way. Um, then, yeah, there's mesh. So you could use a static mesh to kind of fracture out of location. Um, and then, of course, custom as well. Um, but, yeah, I think what I'm going to do now that we've kind of ran through a couple of those is I'm going to go back to cluster because uh, I like that one. And then I'm going to hit fracture. So now you'll see up here that there are a couple of different settings that I can do. Um, you can change these and basically hovering over them will tell you pretty much what it's going to be uh, covering. So like if I drop these down and fracture, it's going to notice there's a lot less. And this is because this is the number of clusters max and min. So I've lessened it from eight um, for both of them to two for both of them. Uh, so we're getting a lot less uh, just fractured parts. So if I yeah, go back to there, you'll see that now it's it's breaking apart pretty decently again. Um, but yeah, so let's say that we are good um, with the the actual breakup. Uh, one other thing you can do too uh, is the explode amount up here. Uh, so if I undo real quick and then hit one. Um, then I hit fracture. You're going to see how it's actually uh, kind of being exploded. And this could be cool because you could actually just fracture it and then simulate it uh, to where it just drops like that. And then you have a, a pile of, um, yeah, just broken apart pieces, which is pretty cool. But I don't want that uh, for this purpose, at least. So I'm going to hit zero. And I guess I can actually do maybe two different ones. So this one over here, I'm going to do one and hit fracture. Oh, okay, so yeah, it would uh, actually propagate to both of them. Um, and that makes sense because it is using the same collection. So you would need to make a, a new uh, geometry collection asset if you wanted two different ones. Um, but yeah, that kind of can help you understand too, where you could uh, have the same destructible throughout the whole scene. Um, and yeah, basically have a destructible asset that's shootable. But I'm um, just going to delete that one, go back here real quick, and then gonna hit fracture, of course. I meant to turn that off, and then there we go. So yeah, now we're good with that. Um, I'm going to say everything is solid with it. And what I can go ahead and do also is uh, if I switch over here, um, right now the color is all crazy, but if I go find one of my colors, let's say I'm just going to use the metal material that was kind of on it before, uh, and I'm going to replace that selected geometry uh, location. Now we can see that it looks just like uh, the vase that we had previously. Um, and let's say I go here and play we're not really going to notice anything with it. Um, it will have the yeah 
uh, the physics to it so it's going to move now that it's a asset and you can see that I bumped it hard enough to actually uh, break it which is kind of cool um, now you can control the uh, the impact uh, settings to where you know it doesn't break as easily or maybe it breaks even easier um, but yeah I'm kind of just you can see I can push it around a little bit and uh, it's eventually it yeah, it's hit and hard enough to where it actually shatters apart um, and then I can also yeah like if I wanted to bring it up here pretty much and then uh, let's say play from here it's gonna immediately drop and shatter Oh, it's just kind of cool, but this is a cool way to actually, yeah, um, pretty much like have some collision. Uh, let's say I had uh, actually had like a gun in here and I could shoot it, uh, then it would shatter as well. Um, but it's really dynamic and a cool way to add a lot of uh, actual interactive ability with your scene um, or environment if you're like making a game and wanting stuff to be destructible and break apart. Uh, this is a really simple way and as you saw it didn't take too long to actually set up just at a uh, simplistic manner. Um, now of course like I was saying you can uh, get a lot more complicated with it uh, but this is just kind of a basic how to set up a, a destructible asset. Um, but yeah besides that that's about it for this video and I will see you next time.